Good morning, Power Metrics Nation. How are y'all doing out there today? Um, we're here at the bunker again. Um, I'm back with you again this morning, John Jones, and I have the professor with me here. So um, I've got Ray Gore here with me, so uh, yes, who's got a lot more experience in the field with this than I do. He's forgotten more than I'll ever know. So, um, so when we're talking about, uh, we're just gonna have a conversation about safety today, about equipment, about practices, and uh, with uh, Ray's wealth of knowledge, we're gonna let him chime in on any of this stuff. So uh, if you have any, obviously you know about the chat rooms. So if you have anything, just chat in and ask us about something. So let's look at what we're gonna do today. Okay, so let's talk about the, the webinar series that we've had going here, the COVID-19, and we're up to series seven. Uh, it's so crazy. Yeah, that's a lot, isn't that's it? Wow, to think we've been doing this this long, man. The first time we actually thought about it, it was I think we were we've been doing it for nine weeks. Wasn't it like nine weeks? And we went, what? Couldn't that's believe. That's a lot. That's a long time. Yeah. So so today we're going to be talking about the safety and metering. Um, then Thursday it's going to be theft, tampering, and troubleshooting. I'll uh, I'll be on uh, on that one as well. And then next week we're going to get some of the smart folks to come back in. And so we're going to talk about Tuesday the effects of power quality. And Thursday, a uh, metering uh, Q&A forum. Um, I'm hoping to be back for that. And uh, that's where we're just going to have some folks up here answering your questions. So stuff you've been thinking about that you'd like to ask, we're going to have some good folks up here. Um, I'm sure Ray will be up here and Steve Hudson, the head of uh, engineering for Power Metrics. And that way you can ask some questions. So here's what we're going to be covering today. Um, what can go wrong, how electricity damages the human body, safety standards, and then personal defenses. Uh, before we get going, though, you know what I'm going to do if you've been on any of these. I'm going to pray first before we get started, and then Ray and I will jump into this. So if you'll join me, I'm going to go ahead and pray real quick. Precious Heavenly Father, uh, it seems like every time we turn around here lately, it's been something else in the news that is broadcast all over and starts division between us again and gets people worked up and we're upset and Father, in the midst of all this, it's, it's, as a Christian, it's, um, it's hard to know where we stand, but anytime we go to your word, it tells us exactly what we need. And uh, Father, in the midst of all this, uh, you tell us uh, in your word that God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but rather he gave us a spirit of power, of love, and of discipline. And Father, right now, as Christians, that's what we need to be. We need to be the light. We need to, uh, to stand up and know what's right and know what's wrong. And we need to show love to people instead of what we're seeing on the screen splashed across this country right now. And in doing so, Father, that's where we need your strength. We need your strength to stand firm, to love those with the love of Christ, and also to make sure that uh, we conduct ourselves in a way that maybe it'll make somebody go, hey, what's, what's going on with that person? And I want to find out what's going on there. So, Father, in the midst of all this, let us... Uh, Let's just keep our eyes focused on you, Lord. It's tough right now, but if we keep our eyes focused on you, everything else will work out. So all of these things we say and ask according to the will of the one who paid it all, my brother, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, let's roll. Okay. So what can go wrong? A lot can go wrong. <laughs> yes. A lot. Ray, Ray, and I, Ray and I talk about this all the time, and we say it all the time, and everybody, I'm sure you're sick of hearing it too, but it's so fast. Yeah, it these, happens quick. These things happen so fast out there in the field that. Yeah. Anyway, so we're going to take a look at something right here. I'm just going to let you know it's uh, it's it's graphic. So we're going to go ahead and show this. Here is an example, unfortunately, of what can go wrong. Looks like a switch gear cabinet or some sort. Yep. You think? Yep. Absolutely. But you can see some of that clothing. We'll talk about in a minute doing its job. Looks as if he's taking it off there. Oh, yeah. They were getting it off there pretty Get quick, weren't they? Teeth off of him. You can see that happened quick, too. It, it wasn't a, even you, a time to even think. No, if you look at the time, it's slow mode for us, but the time that all of this actually transpires is very quick. And that's yeah. the way it is for us out there. It's just, just like and a that. mistake or something we didn't take a second look at it. You know, we always talk about people coming home. Here's a hot stick instance where you can see he's trying to get this closed in. I wonder if it's halfway, if, he, if it's... That's 
what it looks like, doesn't it? Or it looks like it didn't close in. Yeah. yeah. And so now here, it's going to finally, as you said earlier when we watched it, it's going to burn out. There yeah. it is. It burns out. And you see those interrupters hanging off of it up there. Yeah. Um, Ray and I, we were talking about this before this, that um, in a previous life, I dealt with the pole-mounted switchgear and stuff. And, uh, and you know, in that instance right there, since I, with the background I've got, you can see that one of the phases didn't close in or didn't open as it was supposed to. And yeah. you can have that where we prided ourselves on the switchgear that we made, um, that you could grab one of the blades on one phase and you could slam it home and the other two phases would close in every time because of the direct link we had between right. the three phases. And other guys had, um, they would have linkage there that had to be adjusted. And if it wasn't adjusted correctly, you could close in too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if it doesn't close in all the way. Once you, once it's open and you're trying to close it, do not stop. Go ahead and uh, keep turning that handle. Absolutely. Making sure it switch closes in. Shoot, yeah. The no old time to rest. You're exactly right. The old grasshopper switches, those antenna things trying to, and it, you would just use air. It finally yeah. became enough of a dielectric that it would, you know, then you would break the arc. But, buddy, if that thing stopped, if some, yeah, something got <laughs> wrong on that handle assembly and it stopped part way, it would just sit up there and cook. Yeah. And I've seen that guys. That noise with, is loud, too. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> and I've seen, I've seen guys hook up a rope to a pickup truck and the handle on that switch. And I said, what are you doing? I'm not standing underneath there throwing that handle. You can if you want to, son. I'm like, uh, oh, no, I'm with y'all. <laughs> so, so, yeah, molten metal falling down on me never yeah. was. I never thought that was too they cool. They want you to dress up, of course, the – High voltage gloves and all that good stuff on That's there. That's exactly Turn right. Turn that handle, keep it going. Yes, indeed. So, how do you stay safe when you have a dangerous job? And um, if you've heard me running my gums at either meter schools or at your place, <clears throat> you know I'll usually somewhere in there mention we're not baking cookies out there. And it is, this is not, this is definitely a dangerous job. And uh, because we're putting ourselves in harm's way. Um, that's why I have so much respect for the folks out there doing this work is because you're putting yourself sure. in harm's way to serve others. Yeah. So, um, but it is definitely a dangerous job. Keeps a lot. So, so what can, what can happen to us? There are the two things that we are very afraid of and the danger for us is going to be voltage and current, right? Yeah. And you hear, you hear people say, uh, well, it's the current that kills you. The voltage doesn't kill you. But if you stop and think about that for a second, voltage that you got to have, exactly. What just Ray, I don't know if y'all heard what Ray said. Ray said, okay, so I'm a big resistor there, right? I have to provide enough voltage to get across through that resistor. Remember from our previous classes that we showed that the, the resistance chokes it, it chokes the voltage. So if I don't have enough voltage there, then I don't get the current flow through there to cause the problem. So, so it is both. But yeah. we tend to... We tend to dive in on the current because everybody's saying it takes so many milliamps to stop your heart and blah, blah, blah. So that's why. And here's what we've got here. And that's it's similar to what we were just talking about. The V equals IR. Here we go back again to that basic equation. And so I, the current, which is what, you know, we key in on on this. Talking about dangerous to the human body, current. The current there equals the voltage divided by the resistance. So in the chart you've got here, You've got uh, how, how much resistance is provided by just a finger touch, actually a hand holding a wire, a palm touch, or the whole human wow. body. Isn't that something? Yeah, and the difference between dry and wet is significant. But you can see here, we're going to use the same, the same chart to now actually put into something we can talk about, which is we're going to talk about the resistance of a hand holding a wire. And we said before, we'll go back to it real quick. You can see their hand holding a mm -hmm. wire dryer is 10 to 50 kilo ohms. Mm -hmm. So then the 10 kilo ohms would be 10,000 ohms. And so we're just going to use that. Okay. So the 10,000 ohms stays the same in all these. The guy's holding the wire with his hand. But because of the different services and the different voltages that are available, we know that if you take that, if you're dividing by the same number every time the voltage, but if I keep increasing the, the amount of the voltage, my current goes up. Yeah. So it's directly related. If my voltage is going up here, you can see by the equation my current will go up. So that's what happens here. You can see a household outlet, I'm only, I only got 120 volts there, so what's available? 12 milliamps. Yeah. And then if I have a, an actual meter, my voltage is starting to go up, right? And then, okay. so my current goes up. So then I got electric pole, 7,200 volts. You can see how much that goes up. And then substation, it gets all the way up to 10 amps. That's a lot. That's a lot. 
and you'll have to have some pretty serious recall to, to, to do these because we just flashed it up there. But how much resistance does the human body have to electricity? If you said D, D. you are correct. From yeah. the chart a minute ago, it was from uh, 200 to 1,000 ohms for the yeah. entire human body. And off of the chart that we just talked about a minute ago, here's where it relates to literally what happens to us out there in the field. Muscle control, that's crazy, isn't it? So the first one that we talked about, which was that household outlet, which had a, you could have as much as 12 milliamps there. Look right there, just 3 to 10 milliamps, I can start having a problem with muscle control. So what did we, uh, what did we, me and you've talked about this before. Yeah. The old, when I was start out, the old guy, always hit it with the bag of your hand. Always touch yeah. it with the bag of your hand. Transformer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you go up to those locks, swipe it first, swipe the door first, and then grasp the lock, and then unlock it so you won't get stuck. Yeah. That's right. I've heard that too. And because it's saying here, the muscle control is when it hits you, then you clamp on you and clamp grab. Because think about it, release. if your hand, if the muscle's contracting your hand, it doesn't open. It closes. Yeah, it closes. Exactly. And so you're, yeah, exactly. so you're going to close on that bad boy, and it's not going to get any better. So back of the hand, I was always told, back yeah. of the hand. Now, for the meter site, remember, we said that could be uh, 48 milliamps. So now you're getting up into the range of actual respiratory paralysis, which, uh, as we all know, if you stop breathing, that is not good. Then now we're talking about 75 milliamps to 4 amps, which would be pole, because we said you could have 700 milliamps there. And now we're talking about um, problems with the heart. Yeah, because and that's, that's not hardly any amps. Think it's about that, 75 milliamps, yeah, to cause to that problem. Because we know our hearts are all controlled by electrical pulses. That's how it controls the beats and everything. So if you mess up the electrical <laughs> part of the heart, yeah, not so good. No. Yet, you know, my mother has a... Uh, she has to control hers because if you don't, if you if, if the electricity gets off on them, that's why you know it's it's not good. So um, so here we go. So the last one is the uh, tissue burns. This if it gets all the way up to substation, which it's uh, ten plus amps. And that looks like he's going to have that skin graft too. Oh, it? absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And I've seen, you know, we're not going to name any places, but I was uh, last year, last year, beginning of last year. Uh, towards the end of the year before last, late this year, at one of the utilities I went, and a guy had gotten burned like that. Oh, really? Oh, big time. Just opened up a CT cabinet. Wow. And he got okay. burned. And so when I saw him, he was hit a lot of his skin, his face and everything still looked that way. But he had to wear special stuff all over his arms. Oh, yeah. And all, For oh, a period yeah. of time, too. Oh, absolutely. Yep. So how many millions does it take to affect breathing? 30 to 75 milliamps. If yeah. someone's getting all these right, they're pretty good. Safety standards. Safety standards. IEC 6.10.10. That has a lot to do with the Cat 4 and Cat 5, or Cat 3, Cat 4 stuff, right? Absolutely. Okay. So we'll talk about this a little bit, um, and this relates directly to our uh, 3 Series product. Um, there are different standards when it comes to this safety, and we have uh, Cat 4 600 volt that is uh, for the, the ANSI standard in the United States. The IEC 61010 is more of an international, it's like a, you could think of it as consumer protection code, safety code. So in other words, it's not, it's way more than just the electrical side of it. In other words, if you drop something and the screen breaks, what are the chances of you getting cut by a piece of that screen? I mean, it, it even gets down to that point. So um, that's what IEC 61010 does. It like takes it to another level. It goes way beyond just the electrical part of it, okay? And our three series is, um, it is IEC 61010. Uh, it is rated for IEC, IEC 61010, and it is also rated for um, CAT 4 600 volt. And we'll talk about that again here in just a minute, because here we're gonna talk about the CATs. So we got CAT 2 is uh, outlet level in your home. CAT 3 is also taking into account the uh, fuse box or breaker box on the outside, as well as all the circuits in the house. So that's CAT 3. And then CAT4 is where we're going all the way out to the pole. Okay, so it is the, uh, the best rating possible, 600 volts. 600 volts yeah. So that's why we say CAT4 600 volt is how you name that. And um, see our little graphics again? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh, wait, oh no, it gets good here, wait. You ready? Yeah. Now 
why the guy isn't hopping around. I should have had the guy stop hopping around. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I lobbed that one up. It's a power master. It's a power master, so it's IC61010, so there's no problem. No problem. (laughs) Exactly. Nice. Exactly. (laughs) So here's what we did. So you say, well, where does all that electricity go? Because literally, if you think about it, you're talking about 12,000 volts hitting right there at the pole where you are, and you can hold that 3 Series in your hand and still be okay. So you're thinking, well, wait a minute, how can that be possible? Well, what we've got is you've got three layers right here that we use, and I'm going to pop them all out here where you can see them. Over voltage protection, resistance, and oscillation. Yep. So what you have is you have your your over voltage protection, okay, is the first level of protection, all right? And then after the over voltage, then we have resistance. Because now remember and think about this. So with the resistance... Remember that I equals V over R. Mm-hmm. If I increase that resistance a whole bunch, then the current goes down because now I'm dividing that voltage by a really big number. So I end up with smaller current. You can see right there. So if I, if I make that R really, really big, the I goes small. Okay. So we've got a very large resistor in there in the path coming into the device so that it drops that current a lot is the next stage. And then we actually have some isolation circuits using the transformer inside there. You know how you can isolate circuits using a transformer? Mm-hmm. We've also done that too, and we've done some isolation in the 3 Series. So you've got the first level is the, the over voltage protection, then you've got the resistance, then you've got the isolation, and that's how, with all of that, we're able to maintain that IEC 61010 rating on there. Quick quiz. <laughs> okay. What is the highest voltage safety rating possible of a handheld metering device on a distribution meter installation? That's an easy one. What's everybody thinking? There you go. There you go. Volts. Because remember, that's the Cat 4 rating. We went Cat 2, Cat 3, and Cat 4. Okay, so this would be the highest rating would be that Cat 4 600-volt rating. Now, I have heard they have, uh, I think, a 1,000-volt rating now that they've used yeah. a certain, but, but uh, this, for the longest, has been uh, correct. Okay. PPE, personal protective equipment. Okay, so we have uh, different folks that have, you know, this is the NFPA gets involved because we're, you know, there's fire involved. And then we've got ANSI over here, and then you've got ASTM over here. Uh, So all these people get involved with all of our PPE, okay? So here's where we have, let's start talking about gloves. And I mean, I've got a you can see the ratings you see the the different colors right there is the rating of the gloves okay Okay. so and i've actually got some right here well i know those aren't your gloves because they're upside down i mean they're wrong they should be upside down on the bag so i know those aren't yours yeah you just done that for the show did you? yeah 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 that's it yeah yeah i did them for the show so that i could show you guys that uh, you're not supposed to put them in this way right i hope everybody can see that you're not supposed to put the gloves in let me get it to where everybody can see it good there you go. can you see jerry is that is that look yes. good okay so you don't put them in fingers first right because what about the sweat and everything in there and the moisture in there? It's just, it's not going anywhere. Cool, in the bottom of the fingertips. That's right. So you've got these two even holes down here. So if you put the gloves in this way with the fingers up every time, now you'll be assured that you're draining them out. It's kind of like you drive behind a pickup truck, you see the guy with the boots, the rubber boots stuck between the yeah, bed. And they're upside <laughs> and, down. Yeah, and they're upside down. So exactly. it keeps them draining. If you put them the other way, they fill up with water, right? So make sure that you have these with the fingertips up, all right? And you can see on this one, on this set of gloves, you can see the red, you can see the red label there. So what all does that tell us, right? Okay, so it's a size 10 glove, and I'm looking at a class zero. So class zero, if we look at our chart, should say a thousand volts, a thousand, what does that say? A thousand to 1500? Yep. So, and it'll say that too. It says max use voltage rating at a thousand volts. And then you got type one. What is that type one saying there on the glove? I don't really can't really see that far, but uh, yeah. But anyway, you nine times out of ten, some of these companies will put you a little test date here on your glove. So 
before I'd pick a pair up, you know, I'd want to make sure that it has a test date on them and actually do an air test on them too. That's right. And can you tell them what an air test is real quick? Oh yeah, what you can do is just take the glove out of the, uh, the protector there and then you can kind of, you know, roll the glove down and then do just the air, just listen to see if you have any leaks. There you go. Yes, sir. And just hold it up to your ear. Yeah. Yep. Because a, a pinhole yeah. is not good. Yeah. thing of it is with those two is uh, a lot of times um, if you don't store them in your bag, and of course every lawn truck has a wire brush, and that wire brush can get in there and mm. penetrate one of those fingertips there. So That's right. Do you have a, is there a general rule of thumb on the outside protector, the protector. When, it's, when it's time to change that out? Yeah, uh, what I normally do is if I start to see holes and stuff in them, I would definitely change them out, like, you know, different things like this. Um, I like to always go with a higher size protector and a smaller mm -hmm. glove there, um, but it's your preference. But yeah, when these guys, when they start to wear a little, what you want to do is you want to replace them. It's real easy to replace. I've seen guys too, they'll take these and put on a different protector than what was not intended for the glove. So you want to make sure that the protector that you purchase with a glove mm. is with that glove. Nice. I've seen guys, you know, That's a good point. Yeah, use Mixing a high them. voltage glove and then put these little protectors on it. Ah, yeah. okay, I got gotcha. you. Because they can, you know, sure, move around a little bit better than those little guys. Absolutely. So, but always use the same protector with your with your glove. There is That's what right. came with it. Okay. Good deal. Thank you. All right. Safety glasses. ANSI Z87. I love that test. A quarter inch steel ball at 102 miles per hour and it can't break. Yeah, that's something, isn't it? That's sweet. Now, mm -hmm. I remember a long, 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 long time ago, they would get, I wanted to say it was the Klein. You know, they always had the, the Klein uh, tool. Oh, tool. yeah, okay. The Klein tool girl would come out there, and she'd be out there, <coughs> and she would say, she'd get the guys to come out there, and they were, they were hitting uh, a nail. Oh, yeah. You remember that? And then yeah. she'd have a block of wood, she'd sit up there, and, of course, she'd get them guys to swing so hard. She goes, "If you can, man, these guys are wailing on it, and they wouldn't shatter. So, yeah, they're uh, good glasses to yeah. see. So you can see the ANSI Z87.1 is, uh, is the standard for the glasses, and it should say that on there for the glasses. You can get them uh, where they're dark. You can get them where they're clear. I mean, obviously, all that is, uh, is depends on you. Uh, if you're out in uh, the bright sunlight, you want to be able to still see better, not be blinded, then you'd go with the dark ones. That's totally personal preference. It's just all about being able to see what you need to see but being safe with it, okay? Because uh, this protecting those eyes is a big deal. So yeah, um, yeah. so um, so this is so the, the Z eighty seven point one is for the glasses, and then you'll see it should be eighty nine point one for the hard hat coming up. Oh, there we okay. go. Yeah, eighty nine point so. one on the hard hat, and Ray's got one right there, and you can actually read on the label down the bottom down there. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> what does it say, Ray? It says Anzi. Uh, Z89.1, and it also gives you like uh, 2009. And there's also a date of when the hat is made in here, too. Mm -hmm. See those little guys in there? Uh -huh. You can check that. And then nice. um, I think there's a, a date to where if it's out of date or whatever, you can actually discard the hat and get you another one, especially if you start to see scratches and stuff like that with it. That's right. So. so we have the two different protections ratings on this, right? Because we've got the actual, yeah. you know, hard hat construction rating mm -hmm. of being able to take a hit and that and the shock rating. And then you also have the, the ANSI electrical rating on them. Yeah, right? correct. Yeah, that's right. Cool. And you can get them with the wider brim. You can get them with the, they have the little attach, uh, things you can hook on there for a little mm -hmm. shade. A little shade. Or, yeah, you can put mm -hmm. shades on them. So you can you can work with the, with the helmets. And this thing right here, you can slide in. They make little shields that, where you can slide in these little slots right here. And the shield can give you a full That's right. cover there. Cool. All right. Boots. Boots. So, these are designed to impede the flow of electricity through the shoe and ground, thereby reducing the likelihood of electrocution, which is always a good thing. So, um, and usually, um, 
I'd say usually, there's always an exception, but usually the utility gives you guidance on the PPE or they may purchase the PPE for you, but they'll definitely give you guidance as far as um, a lot of this stuff here, like the boots and different things. And I don't know that you may not have approved and non-approved lists. You may have an approved list of you can get these boots, but if you don't get those boots, then they're not considered uh, safe and appropriate. Exactly. So there's going to be probably a list uh, that they'll give you of, uh, you know, at your utility company. All right. <clears throat> FR. Have you got your FR on? Did you bring your FR? Flame resistant, right? And, uh, and then you have the arc, arc flash rating on there. So as you saw in the video er uh, earlier, um, the right type of clothing, you don't want stuff that's going to melt on you, right? You want stuff that's yeah. going to burn off. That's why they, uh, we had the previous lives I've seen where they've actually done the demos where they've had a dummy dressed up in different outfits and they've, they've hit them clothing. with the arc flash. Yeah, yeah, and that stuff just melting on that thing, man. It looked awful. So it is so important to have the right clothing on. I mean, it can mean the difference between, and I'm not trying to be, you know, I'm just, I mean, hey, man, I'm right there with you guys. It can mean the difference between a much better recovery or not such a good recovery. If you're yeah. not wearing the right stuff, man, and it, it can cause a lot more damage if you start melting stuff all over your body rather than it burning off like it should. And any of the other stuff, the boots, the gloves, the heart, all of that stuff. I mean, the difference, if you're, if you're wearing the appropriate stuff and you get in a situation, it's never good. You always want to walk away from it without anything. But I can assure you, if, you're, if you have the right clothing on and all the right appropriate accessories like you see here, if unfortunately you get into something, you will come away with it a lot better than if you don't have the proper stuff on. I can tell you that. You get to go home. Yes, sir. Quiz. That's the most important thing, getting people home. What classification indicates your boots provide protection against electrical hazards? EH. EH. I'm sure everyone got that. A lot of utilities buy their uh, linemen and metermen, their boots and stuff like that. So when you go in there, they know what boots to just, you know, to sell. That's right, mm -hmm. and and they've had the guys come in and demo them, and then they oh, well, I don't know about demo as much as just showing them all the yeah. appropriate certifications and everything, for them to even make the list. So, so you don't want to buy a pair of boots that fit your feet really good, and then all of a sudden you find out they're not electrical. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you got them on that. You just got them broke in. Yeah. <laughs> for people that are on their feet all day like we are, they don't understand that. When yeah. you're out there in the field on your feet all day, I remember. It, Starting out real, real young out there, and a guy telling me, you better have good boots and you better have yeah. a good bed because you're going to have to stand in them boots all day and you want to be able to get long. some rest till the next one. And I was like, yeah, whatever. And then sure enough, the first bad pair of boots I got, I was like, I got you. <laughs> I got you now, brother. I got you now. Limping, yeah, limping at the end of the day. Arc flash. Arc flash. <clears throat> Our enemy out there. What is it? Well, the, the educated description here says, a phenomenon where a flashover of electric current leaves its intended path and travels through the air from one conductor to another or to ground. And it's looking for a path, and it? Yeah. It's trying to find a path, and it will find one. And that's why, and we've talked about this, talked about it, talked about it, shunning the CTs. And you can see the... Just to the right there, that's the shunt blade opened up on the CTs and shunning those CTs and taking them out of it because we can get um, we can get some serious issues right there. You can get a real spike in the voltage off of the CTs. The voltage can go real high on us real quick. Um, we can also open up a CT. And um, and I know you, Shirley, you've been out there. Oh, yeah. And it, oh, and yeah. it happened. Yeah. What's, yeah, the, it's, what's it's, the first giveaway on that one? Uh, yeah, you can hear it too. I've, I've actually saw where a, there was a bad CT and then you open that up like that and then open your returns and you can hear it start to hum really loud. So yeah, it's it's best. And believe it or not, a 12208 is very volatile. Test switch is volatile. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely have my safety glasses and safety gloves on during a test or doing any type of maintenance with that test switch. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'm and I'm telling you, it gets loud quick. <laughs> no time to think. No time to think, and it gets louder and louder. It doesn't. It doesn't stay steady. It gets no. louder and louder yep. until it burns itself into clear. Yep. Hot stick hazards. All right. Let 
let's see here. Is this Chris's favorite slide, the next one? Oh, no. When do meter technicians use hot sticks? No, that's not Chris's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I love making Chris give me the stink eye over there. All right. Looking. Who's that Woo! guy? Woo! Woo! Where'd you get that? We picture? got the professor right there on the screen, baby. Heck, yeah, we do. They can't see you, but you're the one telling me what to do. <laughs> That's baloney. <laughs> so when using high voltage current probes or voltage probes, and for us, and you guys have heard it a million times, that's our um, our, our central leak high the, that they make for us. We've got the, the one that you see there, which is our uh, 8016, the high voltage current probe, and uh, which is extendo stick, where, where we got that handsome actor to come in and put that thing on there. You can see it mounts on the, the end of an extendo stick, and uh, you can get up into, for us, you can go 200 and, uh, 250, I believe it is, phase to uh, ground, yeah. and then 430 phase to phase. So you can get up there. You can get into some serious voltages with that stuff. So obviously that's, you know, you need to make sure you got your head on straight when you're going to use one of those in a substation. Come on, where's Chris's <coughs> favorite? There it is. That resistor there, huh? It's, it's just a resistor, man. That's all it okay. is. Being a tad sarcastic. But uh, okay. so... So with the hot stick, and we were talking about this a minute ago, and we've got one here. All right. We'll put it in between us. Yes, sir. Okay, so you can see right on there, it tells you some very important things. I've got it on race side. So what is something everybody should look okay, for? Okay, so there? it's telling me, it's giving me the high voltage test center. It's a sticker, and it's giving me a test date. And then it's actually giving me what they tested it as per foot. So they've got here 75 kV per foot. So what they did was they uh, ran 75 kV per foot through this stick. And I'm sure they extended it out during the testing. Mm -hmm. And so this stick also has a date when it was manufactured too. So that's pretty cool and a model number. So if you ever need different uh, sections for it, you can actually order um, using that model number there and manufacturer date. So that's pretty cool. And we talked about um, before, way, way, way back in the day, when I first started using one of these, there were some guys that put baby powder on there to make sure they would slide really good because they would hate when those some guys would get hung up on them. And we were just talking in that now, there are uh, cleaners, and Ray will tell you about that, but, but back in the day, that there were guys that used the baby powder. And so I was using the baby powder for a little bit, but then it starts making you think a little bit, well, wait a minute. It's could that dirt. Yeah, yeah, could that start to track, track? That's for right. sure. So you said they've got, uh, they got something Yeah, Yeah, um, Hastings comes out, and that's who made the stick here at the very top. They came out with a little packet that you can get. And what I normally do is when I clean mine is I extend it out. I find me a good size room to extend it completely out and then I'll start with, uh, you can start with either the base or the tip there and just start to clean the whole entire stick throughout and then let it dry and then uh, uh, place it back in its, uh, I normally kept mine in a little container that it came in. But when you use it, make sure you extend it out. That's right. And uh, it will last a long time. Because essentially, mm -hmm. one of the things you're doing is taking the moisture out. Yeah, right? it's a moisture. Sure. It, they call it like a moist, like a moisture eater or something. I believe I can't think of the name of it, but you rub the entire stick and uh, each se each section, and uh, once you do that, um, it'll last you for a good while. And don't use those sticks out in the rain. If you've seen people using those sticks, it comes down. You know, thing of it is, if it does start to sprinkle on you when you're out there using it. You might ought to get one of those packs from Hastings there and, and uh, take care of the moisture in the stick or it's going to be real hard to get up. So Ray, we have, sometimes we have questions from customers asking how do they take care of their high voltage sensor link probe. What was your, what's your recommendation? What, on, that, on that probe there, what I normally do is in the manual it says that you can use denatured alcohol mm -hmm. to clean the fork. Um, I would do that. Um, and clean the fork really good because when you start taking it up there near the conductor, it starts to turn black. And of course, you see, you've seen mm -hmm. it to wear mm -hmm. and uh, and dirt. Um, and you can also take compressed air. And right when, um, if you look at the DB9 connector when it joins the the receiver part, you can actually remove those two screws and blow compressed air in there and clean that DB9 connector out. Mm. So uh, there's a lot of things to do. 
Uh, but per the owner's manual, it says that, you know, they want you to use denatured alcohol. And while you're doing that, you might as well change the batteries too, because mm -hmm. remember they're actually wanting at least 8.7, 8.6 volts. So if it's down in that area, um, it's best to change it out. So, uh, you know, on a nine volt battery. So once I started to dip down to 8.9, I, 8.8, 8.7, I changed it out. Okay, so that's good. I'm glad you said 8.8, because that's what yeah. he told me. So I was just thinking, <laughs> he was being extra careful with me, which is good. I mean, you were trying to look out for me, but the number I always had in my head was 8.8. .8. Yeah. I remember down in Mexico one time, and I was te and I was. they wanted me to test a, uh, a big Walmart, and I got down there, and the daggum batteries were dead. So they sent some guys into Walmart to get me some batteries, and they were, they were like 8.8. Seven, six, they were yeah. right there. You would have yeah. thought, but yeah. no, it, it and it doesn't come the, the low battery indicator doesn't come on. No, so it just it, just, it was giving me some squirrely readings, so exactly. I had to change that battery, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and uh, to what Ray said, absolutely, the big thing is keeping them clean because you can tell when they start shoving them up there and start getting some of these conductors, they're gonna start getting pretty yeah. black, <laughs> yeah. And they they talk to you too, don't they? Yes, they, they do. The noise. Don't, don't the higher a voltage bit. you go up to. <laughs> So you saw right there where if you get the tracking, um, I guess you saw the little thing I, I sent on the screen there where it showed if you do have stuff that tracks down there. Um, I can tell you about an incident that happened uh, just down the road from us here. Um, and I was with someone and we were going to do some testing and actually I was going to shoot some shots. Uh, you know, so I, I brought a GoPro with me so I was going to shoot some shots. And uh, we were doing uh, using the uh, 8014, a high voltage voltage pro yeah. and testing some PTs. And uh, we didn't, I thought they were going to provide a stick. They didn't provide the stick. So when we got there, they gave us a stick. And there you go. That was where we should have inspected the stick, just like Ray just said. And we did not inspect the stick. And they had just run it, ran and grabbed us a stick and brought it out to us. And so we used that stick. And there was a definite arc flash. And you could see where it had arced on that stick, where it went down the stick. And I was standing right underneath the PTs filming with the GoPro. And when all the smoke cleared and I looked around, I was the only one standing there and everybody else was way out in the parking lot. <laughs> and uh, so I can tell you firsthand, uh, yes, it absolutely happens very, very quickly. And a dirty stick can cause you problems. I have seen it myself. And when afterwards we all looked at the stick and you could see where it tracked down the stick. So, um, so anyway, and it put out a little, put a, Put them out. Uh, that, it put out that customer for about uh, two, three hours. So, um, but yeah, it, it's serious. It, it, didn't it burn the ground? Didn't it? The wire that you had on the ground? Yeah, the the ground wire that we had clamped on to the pole ground, and all that ground wire was laying all around my feet. And uh, that's one of those times where I can just look up and smile and say, "Thank you, Lord," because I'm yeah, telling you, if I would have sure. been standing on any of that, and it blew out all along that ground wire. By the way, I mean it blew spots in it all out. So if I had been standing actually on the wire, I would have created a path. Yeah, so, uh, for sure. Yeah, it wouldn't have been good. So <clears throat> another quick quiz. Bum bum bum. In the equation V equals I R, what does the letter I stand for? Okay, if anyone's been watching this this <laughs> series and they don't get this one right as many times as I've said this, call me afterwards. 865-414-7571. Okay, we'll have, you'll have your own tutorial. I'll give you a tutorial. But I think by now everybody has heard V equals IR so much they're sick of hearing it. So the I would be current, R is my resistance, and V is voltage. Mm -hmm. Questions or comments or stories? Does Questions, comments, stories? stories. Yeah, has anybody on the chat talked about any kind of safety issues that they have had? Uh, Andy Ray mentioned chance it's a hot stick and cleaner he recommends ah okay yeah Good is deal. it a is it like a uh, a rag of some sort of like a sponge or something that you that you place on the stick and I'm not sure so andy yeah so andy's saying that uh that there is something made by ab chance it's another yeah. uh, another stick another, cleaner yeah i know hastings has that good yeah cleaner. for sure you know they would have it I can see AB having I would it. definitely use it, though. I would definitely use um, the cleaners on those sticks. It's a must. Absolutely. Yeah, they actually make hot sticks. I guess okay. Yes. Solvent. That's okay. With the, with the hot sticks. Yep. 
So AB Chance is another one, folks. Um, thanks, Andy, that uh, you can also get the, uh, the stick cleaner from that. Hey, what about using baby powder in the disposal gloves? Wipes. I'm sorry, Andy said disposal wipes, not a salt. Yeah, yeah, okay. Ah, cool. What about some people using baby wipes, or uh, not baby, oh my gosh, but baby powder in gloves? They actually make a glove powder. Mm -hmm. So can I use baby wipes in my glove, or should I use the glove powder? I use baby powder in there, I'll be honest. Or I don't baby. have the proper glove powder. Yeah. I'm hoping there's not a difference because otherwise I'm cold busted right now. But I, I do use baby powder in mine. And not a lot, but I use it if it's really, really hot out there, you know, one day and I'm gonna do I'm testing several sites. It's hard to get them off, isn't it? It is, yeah. dude, yeah. Because they're sticking to your hands you're saying <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Plus, I don't like a whole lot of moisture on me when I'm dealing with high voltage. Yeah, I know. So. It feels weird. It? <laughs> it just doesn't feel right at all. So, uh, so yeah, I do. I will say that I do use that. And 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 if you've come by and I've got several sites to test and it's really hot and I'm down south, um, you'll probably see me holding that glove open and blowing in there too sometimes, just yeah, trying to get some airflow sure. going in it just to dry them out. Yep, absolutely. Well, we uh, we sure appreciate everybody tuning in today. Um, it's Consider yourself having a lucky a lucky day today and a good day because we don't normally get the professor down here. He's usually tied up helping other folks all day long on the phone. But um, we really appreciate you guys uh, being part of this series. Um, and I can't say enough, you know, when we were just doing these in the beginning, you know, it's kind of funny. We sound like, you know, we're some kind of serious crew or something. But we were just in here just trying to, just trying to help out our customers. And we were stumbling, fumbling around. But we really appreciate all the positive feedback. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's been very... It's, it's funny. I'll, I'll get a call from someone about something and they'll say, oh, and by the way, I haven't been watching yeah, the webinars. It. It's something. We it. really, really appreciate sure. the, the positive feedback. And uh, please uh, tune in to all of us so you get your certificate and hang it on the wall. And if there's anything you can think of, we've got a suggestion we're, uh, we're working on right now that someone sent in to us about what they want to see. So if you've got anything you want to see, uh, please send it in to us. And uh, once again, just uh, thank you all and be careful out there. Make it home safe, okay? Thanks, John. Thank, thank you, oh. Andy Ray. Would definitely an agreement using glove powder. Yeah, uh, glove anything powder. Anything that, that has no talc. Yeah. That's what his recommendation was. Ah, okay. I guess Thanks, I John, man. <laughs> nice working with you. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I know we're supposed to stay six foot apart, but That's right. <laughs> it's been fun. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, brother. <laughs> we need bloopers on this, don't we? <laughs> yeah. We can make that like dropping the hard hat off the table. Blah, 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 hitting something. Well, who jinxed me? Are we still on? Yeah. I hope we are. No, you, know, you know who jinxed me was Dadgum. I hope he's watched too. John Bullock. You remember when John Bullock that day said, I can't believe Jones hadn't tripped over one of them cameras yet. I mean, within the next two minutes, I hit one of them little stands there, <laughs> and I caught that sucker coming over. Did so, yeah, we probably should do some bloopers. Yeah, but, uh, we need some bloopers. That's yeah. right. But seriously, uh, thank you so much, y'all, for the feedback. And uh, if you would like to see something on here, man, please request it because uh, we'll make, we'll make uh, every effort to, uh, to see that it happens, all right? So thanks again. God bless y'all, and be careful out there, all right? Peace.